Today's episode of the Nate Land Podcast is brought to you by Robin Hood and HelloFresh. Hello, folks, and hey, Bear, Aaron Weber here with uh, my co-host, Brian Bates, and across the All table right. from me, filling in for Nate Bargetzi is Dusty Slay. Dusty, right. welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. Good to see you, buddy. I'm pumped to be here. How's it feel from that side of the table? Feels good. I always like this. Yeah. Nate's you know? not here today. I don't know what he's doing. He's headlining the Roman Coliseum or something all over the world. I don't yeah, know where he's at. I feel like I never see him anymore. I miss him, but I'm happy to be here with the two of y'all. Uh, he sent a statement. <laughs> this is about uh, the shortened. Uh, Did he really episode? Is this a real? I haven't I haven't read this yet, so I don't know what it says. Feels like a bit though, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is the first statement in the history of the podcast. I know a lot of you are upset about the recent decision to shorten the podcast to an hour. While I understand your concerns, I don't care. <laughs> I'm a huge. St- oh, I wish I'd have read this ahead of time. This is- <laughs> I'm a huge star now. Don't need any of you. Oh, this is awkward. <laughs> Uh, the truth is, no matter how long the podcast, you rubes will still listen to it because you have nothing to better do no. with your sad little lives. No. <laughs> this is awkward. This I, is, I this is intense. You should have read it ahead of time. <laughs> we love you. And none of this is lost on us. Sincerely, <laughs> Nick Bargatze. Well, that's awkward. I wish yeah. I'd have read that ahead of time. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Anyway. No, uh, actually, it was my decision to shorten the podcast. Was it really? Nate wanted to do three hours. But I'm like, guys, uh-huh. come on. I am so busy. I'm going to be honest with you. I support one hour more than three. <laughs> We've done everyone... three before. Haven't we? We've done John Reap was here for like four hours or something crazy, <laughs> right? I feel like we did a long one with him. John Reap's got a lot of energy. He does, and he sustained it for the yeah. whole length of the time. We've done a few. I don't know if we've ever hit three, but we've uh-huh. pushed two and over two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, leave them wanting more. I mean, it's my motto. I do get it. Like sometimes, if I'm like, I got a, uh, I got a, pl- a flight, and I'm trying to download some podcasts to listen to. If it says two hours, I'm like, nah, I can't. I don't. I don't. You know, I'm not going to have the time to mm-hmm. listen to it, and then I'll never go back and finish. Yeah. So. Yeah. An hour right. is a real sweet spot, but I also don't work a desk job. So I think if you like, if you work where you can be free to just listen to podcasts mm-hmm. all day, I get wanting to wanting more time Mm -hmm. Uh because podcasts are pretty filthy out there so it is nice when you can (laughs) find like something that you could listen to at work or around your kids Uh i didn't realize how filthy a lot of podcasts were until i had kids in the car and then i was like oh gosh Uh you know because i'm you know i'm completely desensitized to the world right but uh I've been around a lot of filth in my life. People always say that they they wish they could comment during the episode. Uh-huh. I get it because I I mean even the ones I'm not on. If I listen, I'm like these guys are idiots. Uh, <laughs> I listen to Dusty's every week. I'm like this guy does not yeah. know what he's talking about. I was listening to talk radio today in Nashville, and I know, and they were talking about the moon landing. And then they go, "Can you believe a lot of people don't believe we landed on the moon?" And I know the host, so I text him. <laughs> While he, he's on air? Yeah, and he gave me a shout out. Uh, so now Nashville <laughs> believes that I don't believe in the moon landing, whether I do or not. Yeah. <laughs> they believe that. You're not coming down on it either way. Yeah. just You're just interested in the conversation. <laughs> yeah. And that's what, it, that's what it's all about, <laughs> yeah. really. Is Ooh. this someone you want to say? Well, yeah, Matt Murphy I listen to okay. on, on 99.7. Okay. Really fun guy. Okay. He's had me on a few times. Really nice guy. Yeah. And they're covering just topical stuff like the moon landing. Yeah, he just talks about anything. Just like day-to-day news. He, and- like, <laughs> he'll be political, but he really just gets it. He's like a, you know, a libertarian, so he right. just kind of, you know, he just goes off. Uh-huh. People get mad sometimes when I'm on the uh, uh, station with him because they're like, we got all these hot topics to talk about, and you're talking to some comedian, and I'm like, well, not just some comedian. I'm, I'm the best. You know what I mean? So take it easy. <laughs> Where were we all this weekend? Oh, God. Where were you, Dusty? I was in Huntsville, Alabama, and I did a moon landing joke, and it What's went very. I spilled water on myself, but oh. it went very good. The, the, I'm left-handed, and and when I'm over here, everything's backwards. Oh, you know what I mean? okay. So, you can move that around. Well, oh, so I need nice. the handle to be. Yeah, you're left-handed too. Yeah. God, that explains. It just explains a lot. Yeah. 
I mean, we're geniuses. What are you getting at? Like finding out you're left-handed. You're like, that makes sense to me. Well, why just me? I don't know. Dusty's, <laughs> he's got a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you're like, yeah, you're just, you probably drive with your left foot too. No, I drive with my right foot. Okay. But I do a lot of things with my left. <laughs> well, I was in Huntsville, okay. Alabama, yeah, Stand yeah. Up Live. Yeah. It was great. Uh, I never sold out a show in Huntsville before. I've been going for years and Nobody years ever and years. Has. I never sold one. I, I sold out three this weekend. All right. Yeah. Three of the five were sold out. Wow. And it was incredible. Good for you, man. Great shows. I made a joke. I said, you know the roads in Huntsville. This may not be for everyone, but they have this weird road. Uh -huh. And it's just right out in front of the club. It's like it's like kind of an interstate, but you got to get off, get back on, make U-turns. Yeah. I said, I don't know who's designing this, but I can see why we haven't been back to the moon. <laughs> Hot joke. They loved it. One show, I gave it a nice pause, and then I go, if the moon's even real. And another great pop. All right. They loved it. And there's NASA people in yeah. the audience. Yeah. And because and they're the people who know it's not real. You know what right. I mean? Like they're right <laughs> up in it. They're just in on the lie. So when somebody somebody says it, they're like, ah, oh, yes. It's like a, a, a big release. It's cathartic to them. for them. Yeah. It feels good. Like, of course, if we were in a conversation, they would have to go. No, it's real. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But there. if we yeah, yeah. no, But I do believe the moon's real. Just that we can't go okay. there. Okay. I do believe it's oh, real. Oh, you do believe it's real. All right. That's yeah, of quite course, a concession. Of course it's real, but we just, you know, we can't land on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Well, yeah, it's quite a concession. Like they said. said we were going to go back this month, and then, and then, you know, they were saying that last year. We're going to go back in January, and now we're, we're not doing it. I, I don't think that's quite right. Well, maybe we have different news sources, but uh, I think the first of the year they were saying we were going to go back this year. Or make a trip around it okay. in 2024 with people. Right. 2025, we're going to land on the moon. Now they've already scrapped the 2024 trip around it. So right. everything's been pushed back. Oh. So regardless of the timetable, we're not going to do it now. <laughs> okay. And then India did it. But then when the footage looked like uh, uh, the video game Galaga <laughs> or Galactica, whatever the game was called. <laughs> yeah. India landed a rover yeah. on the moon. I don't know if it's called a rover. But the fitted footage looks bad. It does look bad. I'm not yeah. saying they yeah. didn't do it, but the footage is not a good look. Yeah. Yeah, I think we tried it'd to show like, it on here. It'd be like me telling you that I got into a fight and saying it's on video and then showing you Street Fighter 2. <laughs> and I'd be like, no, that's me right there. And you're like, that's a cartoon. And I'm like, no, nah, dude. When I get into fights, I get into cartoon mode. <laughs> <laughs> Were they claiming it was video or just saying this is animation of what it looked like? <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I mean, so Huntsville was good. It was a great <laughs> At the time. end of the day, Huntsville was great. It was a great time. Great time. Had a lot of fun. Great yeah. club. Yeah. I love it there. There's a lot of coasters here for stacked coasters stacked on top of coasters around here. Well, you got two cups there. I do have two cups. That's kind of a boring coaster, but I mean. <laughs> what about you, Brian? What were you Sorry. up to this week? <laughs> <It's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> you use coasters at the house? Yeah. Well, Hannah does and tells me to do it. Hey, you don't. I could care less. I buy a lot of my furniture at, you know, a thrift store. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of furniture that you can afford to just throw out at some point. Yeah. And I like that. The whole thing's a coaster. Yeah. 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 Well, let's don't get ahead on furniture talk. Oh, oh right. Right, right. This is a furniture episode. furniture episode. Once Nate's away, we can finally get into yeah. it. Yeah. Some stuff we've been <laughs> yeah. wanting to get off our chest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I love that. You're right. Let's, yeah, we got a furniture episode. This is fun. Save all the furniture this talk. This is, you know, a little uh, preview of what's about to happen. Right. And that right. feels good. Uh, I was at a venue called the Walnut House in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. The Walnut House. This is my third time to do this uh, place. It's a great, great venue. Mm -hmm. Two shows. I think they were both sold out. Nice. Um, so, yeah. Good deal. It's a great time. Oh, I'd also like to say this, though. This is something that I did. <laughs> All right. Sorry. <laughs> I did the back a, to Dusty. I yeah. did a podcast called Are You Garbage? You sure did. And uh, I know it was shared in the Facebook group, mm -hmm. but I don't, you know, maybe there's more listeners that. And are, on Reddit. And on Reddit. Oh, I, I didn't see it, right? You know, I'm out of Reddit now. Reddit's not kind to me. And It's uh, not kind to anyone. Yeah. But I did that episode, and uh, your wife texted me and said it's uh, maybe the best podcast she's ever heard. 
And uh, wow, she likes to speak it. She gets <laughs> she gets excited, and uh, but I'm just saying, I don't think she would mind me saying that. And mm-hmm. uh, have you ever seen her Instagram story? There's something right now that's the greatest thing she's. All I'm saying is she texts that to me personally, yeah. and it made me feel good. And a lot of people have said it's a hot episode. It was a hot episode. The consensus is it's one of the best episodes of that podcast. Yeah, which has a lot of great episodes. Yeah, Lucy said best ever that she's ever heard so uh, across all podcasts all community she didn't get detailed with it but uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> best of any type of media period yeah yeah but uh you know i felt good about is it. is this the beginning or the tail end of the dusty slave media blitz following the netflix special this is i don't know i don't know how long it'll go on but it's uh-huh. still happening I, okay. I still i'm gonna make a trip to la next week so nice uh, so it's still it's still going any other big stuff in the works you did the tonight show anything else like well that? there is some stuff i don't know that i can say yet okay but there is some stuff in the <laughs> works some stuff i'm very excited about okay all right we'll a little teaser yeah, how about we'll that? can we guess uh well you can guess but i won't say yes or no about yeah, it that kind of takes the fun out of guessing <laughs> yeah, it does. Does. <laughs> yeah it does <laughs> uh where were you heard i was in des moines iowa i gotta tell you iowa Great state. Doesn't get talked about enough. I I like it a lot. I think it's a great comedy state, too. I was thinking about it. I've had great shows there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had a bad comedy experience in Iowa. Dubuque, Cedar Rapids, Des Moines, a couple other smaller cities I've done stuff in. But the Des Moines Club was great. Sold one show out, not three. All right. right. One show sold out. That's big time, Yeah. Yeah. Out of three shows, one of them sold out. Not bad. And it was just every show was great. The people were nice. A lot of Nate Lane people came out. It was uh, a lot of fun. So thank you, everybody that came out in Des Moines. Iowa seems to be a hot Nate Land place. So does Ohio, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, that the time I brought us those Longhorn gift cards, that was from a lady in Des Moines. Iowa. Oh, okay. oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I wonder if she came to your show. Well, we'll never know. Yeah. Because if somebody gave me four $50 <laughs> gift cards i don't think i'd ever bring it into y'all i think i would not tell you about it <laughs> so just putting that out there who knows if i got something yeah yeah weekend. that's yeah. true yeah maybe we call around to the longhorns say hey to the guy it's been 200 bucks in there on four separate gift cards <laughs> do you remember seeing him <laughs> maybe you want to hop into these comments yeah let's do it what do you think dusty you want to read them or brian you want to read them or um I feel like one of y'all should do it. All right. Dusty, you want to do it or you want me to do it? I'm not like, it's one of those days I, I don't like the sound of my voice today. Uh, yeah, oh. let me read a couple. Oh, okay. And, uh, we don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to read them all. All right. You know what I mean? You we can split know. up the duties here. Oh. You know what I mean? That, that'd be a first. Maybe I'll read one, then you read one. We'll take some turns. If you want to jump in on one, wow. you know what I mean? We'll spread it around a okay. bit. Okay. Well, I do want people to know. You can read the first one, but I want people to know comments come from Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Apple Podcast Reviews, and Nate Land at NateBargatze.com. Not Brian Bates' Gmail or Brian Bates' social media. Or my Twitter. Yeah. Or You getting a lot of that? No, not a lot, but I will just tag Brian in it when, <laughs> uh, when that happens. Yeah, people ask him, hey, how can we get a comment? He'll just tag me. <laughs> Let me take care of it. All right, this is from Erica Breaker. I think it's Breaker. I like that last name, though. That too. sounds like a wrestling sure name. Erica Breaker. About to break these bones. Aaron mentioned <laughs> the plane where the door flew off. I was on that plane sitting across from the hole and just wanted you guys to know that it was not a door from the inside. From the inside, it was... Okay. From the inside, it was a regular seat and window. Imagine the terror of flying and a random piece of your plane rips off and you have to look at the earth below you. That does sound terrifying, but I don't know that it's any less terrifying if it's a door, a window, a piece of the wall. I think just something ripping off the plane and you being open is pretty scary. Yeah. 
there's the picture right there. How crazy is it that we had somebody who was on that flight I listen know. to the podcast? That's so crazy. Mathematically, what are the chances? Dusty, you want to calculate that? For I us? think um, very low. I would say one <laughs> yeah. in a million. I'm just going to, uh -huh. I have no idea how those sort of statistics work. Yeah. How many people are on that flight? 150 maybe? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. Erica, I'm glad you're okay. And there's the picture right there. We got a nice picture. I'm glad you weren't sitting right there. I think it's, I'm going to disagree with you, Dusty. I think it's more terrifying that just the side of the plane flew off and mm -hmm. not, and not an exit door. I didn't know that. I didn't know that's what happened. I thought it was the exit door. Um, I think that's insane. I think most people are thinking that. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're at the exit and then the, uh, when it lands, the flight attendant comes and goes, I thought you said you could handle the duties here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came by and I told you to read the brochure uh -huh. and you and I gave, I go, I'm looking for verbal confirmation. And you said, yes. Right. right. And then here we are mid flight. The door comes off. Mm -hmm. I think it's got to be a relief that it's part of the wall. Imagine being at the exit row and another part of the wall goes <laughs> off and you're like, I don't know. Should I, should I jump into action here? Yeah, she yeah. didn't ask me about row, yeah. row B. <laughs> should I open the door, get a little flow going through? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been a hero like that? Absolutely, absolutely not. You haven't? Nah. A hero like that? No, like, uh, have you ever stepped in in a, in a situation like that? Not just on a plane, but anything in general. I think I've tried before in certain situations, but uh, I feel like it's like, it, it, it'll be all wrong to where it's like, they're like, no, 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 we don't need anything. And you're like, oh, okay, I was trying to. What, you mean like you saw somebody on the ground or something? <laughs> I don't know. Like, let's say this, uh, like when... Uh, you know, the tornado hit Nashville. I right. kind of wanted to go and help clean up. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, whenever I show up to something like that, there'll be somebody already in control. And they're like, oh, we want you to just, uh, you know, uh, pick up small sticks. And I'm just like, oh, I know I'm not out here to just pick up small sticks. You That's know? called so, being a villain. Yeah, <laughs> That's maybe the so. opposite of a maybe hero. Maybe you're right. Maybe, but I want to be more involved. I don't want to be off to the side. I don't need to be a hero. I don't need to be on, on the news. Uh -huh. But I'd rather, you know, let me help, you know, people inside, see if they need, you know, I take my arm or something. I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to be picking up little pieces of sheetrock out here. <laughs> you think they're going to be cleaning up while there's still people trapped? I don't know. And we I just, need you to reach in to pull them out? I just feel like I always get, the, when I used to help my church do things, I just felt like I always got like the least important. Fun. Yeah. They're like, why don't you go get the donuts? You know? And I'm like. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you actually, <laughs> Sounds important fine. to me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they would do that to me. Yeah. I, um, I've never been a hero, far from it, if anything. Far from it. <laughs> I've caused some detriment, probably. So you're a villain too, then? Yeah, I guess so. But um, Angela Johnson, who was on our podcast a few weeks ago, I opened for her at Stardome in, uh, in Hoover right like two days after the tornadoes came through Tuscaloosa and oh, did okay. so much damage. Okay. And she stopped and bought all these supplies. I don't know. I can't remember if she had a contact there. And knew what to get. Yeah. But we stopped at Target and bought all these supplies that apparently maybe rescue workers need or something. And she paid for it all. And we took it to the, the scene. And That's cool. Uh, it was a lot of stuff. So Angela stepped up. Wow. See, I feel like. But you were there. I was there. You I know, watched. You were in the room. Did you help load that into the car at all? No, I stayed in the car. But <laughs> uh, you're like, I'll just I'll keep the car warm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I was listening to a podcast, had to finish. But but I feel like if I you know if I were to buy stuff like that, I would show up and they go, yeah, just put it over there with the other stuff. Uh -huh. It would like I don't want them. I don't need them to you know, but you know, pop a confetti balloon when I get there. But, but you I, want someone to go, is that Dusty Slay? Or I just want somebody to go, hey, we really appreciate this. This is oh, very helpful. sure. I get that. You Instead of being, yeah, you. just put it over there with the other stuff. We don't really got time to deal with it right now. Right. I just feel like that's how people are going to react to me. It, yeah. At people's, the worst day of their life, you'd still like it to be a little bit about you. Yes. Okay. That's fair. Or 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 not a little bit about me, but, um, you know, just I don't want to be pushed to the side. Like, you know, the movie Super Bad, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> They spend, these two guys spend the whole day trying to get this liquor for the party. Right. And then they go through, they go through so much trouble to get it. And they finally get there with it. And they're like, yeah, we got tons of it over here. Let's put it over there. Yeah. Sure. Or, or a Teen Wolf. This seems to be a theme in a lot of, like they go through so much trouble to get a keg and then they finally get there and it's, you know, they got tons of kegs. Right. 
Right. You're not a hero. Well, I always reference Seinfeld. There's a Seinfeld episode where George puts a, a dollar. In, I can't remember what it, it was. A bill in the mm. tip jar, and right when he reaches to do it, the guy looks away. He yeah. doesn't see it. Yeah, and he wants the recognition. Yeah, sure. I get that. I get that. I have told people that I tipped before. Just want you to know. Like, Just want you to know. I put some. I in did there. put some money in there, and then you can lie about how much you did. Yeah. Because they didn't see it. Put a hundred dollars in there, and they're like, "We can see there's only three in there." Well, <laughs> somebody took it, but I don't know what to tell you. I, I wasn't there, but Nate's bus driver, Ricky, right, was really a hero. He, uh, Nate's road manager at the time, started choking on food, and Ricky gave him the Heimlich maneuver and really? saved his life. Yeah, really? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, could you do that for somebody? Could you do that for me? I. Uh, when well, you gotta get your arms, when you gotta get your arms around. All right. When, <laughs> <laughs> me and Dusty together. <laughs> you have to join hands. Everybody in the room to get around my Everybody. stomach. Laura, come up here. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, You're filling in nicely for Nate. Yeah, you, sure you know. Are. Listen, I see an opening, and I'm like, do I want to make the joke? It'll probably please be, do. It'll probably please be do. Worth it. Well, I did take a. Uh, Infant CPR class when Eleanor was born. Oh, okay. And but they also did it for you know adults. And she was talking about. I have a joke about this. The woman from the Red Cross teaching it talked about abdominal thrust. And I said, "Are you talking about the Heimlich maneuver?" And she said, "Yeah, but we don't call it that anymore because Doctor Heimlich had some beliefs we don't agree with." He was a Nazi, right? I don't think that. I think that was you thinking about maybe Aspergers. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I was. <laughs> <laughs> but the bottom line okay. is they don't call okay. it the Heimlich maneuver anymore. Wow. It's abdominal thrust. Oh, good. You can even lose your maneuvers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you lo- ah, we're losing it all. So anyway. Um, you want to? Well, I'd like oh. to know Dr. Heimlich's views. Um, I, I think it was, I looked it up. I think it was not anything as sinister as yeah. that. It was just. Just about the moon landing. It was about. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a about a actual procedure like the proper way to do something and they disagree oh it's like a scientific disagreement i think so so they canceled it wow so anyway uh i think you shouldn't do the maneuver if you see somebody choke and you go you know what i don't believe the way <laughs> that dr heimlich believed so that's I, my joke so oh is it sorry <laughs> okay sorry. <laughs> well don't bring it up well let them punch it up for you <laughs> <Yeah>. Brian. <laughs> shingle ladies <laughs> yeah. uh you mean do this one yeah Joshua Heinstrider. Mm. Friday at work, we sometimes watch a show during lunch. I picked Dusty's new Netflix special. Within eight minutes, two people had spit out food laughing, and one guy choked pretty bad. Oh, perfect timing for this. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. He is okay now. This is Heinstrider. I mean, that may be related. Yeah. This is all related. The manager declared that this is not work appropriate. I guess not. However, everyone in the room asked me afterward who that comedian was. I think Dusty made some new fans. All right, I love that I'm that I'm killing in the in the what is this uh, the, the lunch room? Yeah, here. I love that. All right, thanks, Joshua Hein Strider. That's pretty awesome. That is that's that awesome. Is I love very that. Nice, everybody. I hope, go watch Working Man. I hope that ch- choking. Oh, he does say he's okay now. So I'm glad yeah. glad to know that. Well, that's awesome. I love that, mm-hmm. Alex. Thomason, 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 Aaron was Thomas own. <laughs> Alex T. Aaron was wondering about other uses for hot hands technology. As a young single man, I took a lady on a date when it was cold out. I only had one hot hands packet left, so my date and I had to share it. Boom! Instant hand holding. Probably the only time I've ever looked smooth with the ladies. My friends started calling me hot palms. I love that. That could that's risky though. It's like your hands cold, put it in this pocket. It's warm in this pocket. <laughs> oh, I don't think he left it in his pocket. Oh, you I think? think he put it in yeah. his hands oh, okay. and they let's <laughs> share it. That's how I would do it. That's, <laughs> that's a way creepier way of doing it. <laughs> that's hey, how I would do it's it. It's nice and warm in this pocket. <laughs> oh, geez. That's a hot pocket. Well, Alex, uh, if you plan that, I mean that's brilliant. Is I think just to have one, but then there's always that. I always think, what's the possibility? She goes, nah, it's not yeah. that cold. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> you like apples? <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. like, I'd rather do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd rather I, just go home. Yeah, I'd rather just let's go back inside. Yeah, if she's like, it's not that cold, but then you see her doing that, <laughs> mm-hmm. you're like, you don't want to end the date. You think yeah. the date's over? 
Uh, David Lewicki, would love to get y'all's thoughts on comedian comedians using visual or PowerPoint slides to aid in their acts. I've been seeing it more often lately, and it seems like something that might bother traditional stand-up comedians. Where have you been seeing it from? There's a uh, a friend of mine, or he's a Nashville comic, Ben Palmer, who moved here, and his act is um, he uses a lot of visual aids like that, and it's very funny. It's great. It's just a different type of thing. Yeah, it's not something I think I would ever do. I don't think of y'all would do that either. But it's just a style thing. Well, I'm against it, but um, not uh, if you like. I I think if you're a stand up comedian, mm-hmm. then you just stand there with a microphone and do comedy. But you can still be a comedian and entertainer. But I do think if you're a considered a stand up comedian, then you know that's your thing. But Where, if you're, uh, you know, you can still be an, you know, an entertainer. Where's the line? What do you think? Can uh, you rock? What do you mean? Like what? I do on stage? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you don't got to stand still, but you do got to be standing. <laughs> yeah. Even people that sit down, I'm kind of like, if you're a legend, you're almost like, all right, you can do it. But I mean, I think if you know, if we're stand up comedians, we got to be, we got to yeah. be standing. I think right. a lot of church comedians use visual effects. They do. Yeah. 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 I'm not saying you can't do it, but personally, I'm not going to be doing it. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's what I was saying too. It's just a style thing, and I choose not to do it. Yeah. But also, who knows? You know, I'm not too big to get a laugh any way that I can. (laughs) I mean, I I, I was told that, you know, James Gregory would used to, he he once hit a guy's puppet that used a puppet. And the guy, you know, couldn't do his act because he lost his puppet. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But I can, you know, I've lost my voice and still did my show. And I thought it was a very good show. I did a weekend recently with, with I lost my voice. And I was very hoarse. But luckily, my voice is already a little raspy anyway. Yeah, yeah they couldn't even tell. Uh, so I still, <laughs> I did four shows wow. in, in uh, Spokane, uh, not feeling very good. And uh, I think I crushed it. Do you guys plan on ever retiring from comedy? Next week. (laughs) (laughs) If I ever sell out three shows in Huntsville, (laughs) yeah, I think I'm done at that point. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even like that's a that's a personal and also like a financial decision. And like neither in neither department am I even thinking about that in any in any way. What about you? I mean, you're getting there. So like what (laughs) you're gonna have to decide if it's financial decision. Uh, maybe I should use Robin Hood. Oh, dang. Boom. Hey, dude. That Didn't was, even see it coming. You played the long game. Did you know that was happening when you... I did. Did you know that even if you have a you full, all week. Well, hold on, Brian. I got to read this verbatim. <laughs> so can you just hold off on the comments? Till <sighs> all right. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by the Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Adam Lauer. We think Lauer? I think lower. Lower? I think lower. Adam Lower. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> I drug my wife. Ooh. Oh, I drug my wife and six of my in-laws to Aaron's show in Columbus. It's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> None of them had ever been to a comedy club before, and I'm proud to report that Aaron has seven new fans. All right. During what? his act, wait, oh. he wasn't. Oh, oh, his wife and six. Okay, okay. All right, sorry. During his act, Aaron had ver- several very funny bits about the city of Columbus. It got me wondering: How do you guys go about creating material for a specific place? Has it ever backfired and upset the audience? Oh man, I don't remember 
what Adam's talking about. I don't yeah, I don't think he I saw did. Aaron. I think I said good to be here in Columbus, and then I kind of <laughs> moved on from there. But I don't know. That's very nice of you, Adam. Thank you. I'm glad everybody enjoyed the show. I don't know. I feel like I need to do more of that. I see some comics. I had Monty Mitchell. Y'all remember Monty? I know Nashville Monty. Nashville guy. Yeah, very funny. He was with me this weekend in Iowa, and um, he did we went to the state capitol in des moines Mm -hmm. and that night he talked about the state capitol building for like nine minutes Mm -hmm. on stage doing great getting big laughs i was like how do you do that Monty's great some guys are great at doing that uh i don't feel like i'm one of those guys um so i don't talk about where i'm at that much i mean i was with nate in tacoma when he did the dead horse and the mount rainier that day and i was blown away by crazy how great it was. Very first time he told it. I think for me, it's like some cities I go to, something happens and I'm like, oh, I got something. This is great. Uh, but other times it's like, yeah, I mean, I for me, I've, I've walked around Columbus uh, and I like Columbus. I don't find there to be anything particularly funny about it. I do like the city. Yeah. But as I'm walking around, I'm like, there's nothing really to make fun of here. Some play, like when I was in Tacoma, I made fun of like how I went walking down one side of town and it got real sketchy and people seemed to agree. They yeah. enjoyed it, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. uh, but yeah, I did the Huntsville thing. It's like, but I don't know. It just if something's funny, but it's like, you know, you go to like a real rundown place. I don't want to be trash in the city. Right. But like your city's crap. You know that, right? Because people will like it, but yeah. it just, some people won't. And it just, I don't like it. It doesn't mm-hmm. feel good. Mm-hmm. More than once, because I know Tennessee pretty well. Yeah. I've been to a small town in Tennessee where I've made references to things there that they didn't know about. Oh, <laughs> Like, wow. I knew too much. Yeah. And I thought, these jokes are going to kill. And then they just stare at me. Yeah, you start doing research on the city, and then you're like, you know, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. One of them was, uh, I did a Christmas party in Lewisburg, Tennessee. And I when I grew up, Lewisburg's a very small town. There was a guy who made it. I think all the way to the majors from mm-hmm. Lewisburg. He was my age, and 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 I thought this guy is going to be a hometown hero. And I started talking about him. Nobody knew who I was talking about, <laughs> not one person. Wow. Now, granted, that was thirty five years ago, but uh-huh. uh, I'm like, oh boy. There's a car that came through Nashville recently. He was like, I got some good jokes about your new mayor, and uh, nobody knows who the mayor nah. is yeah. and nobody knows anything about the mayor. Nah. It's like, I don't know how much you think we know about stuff. Yeah. Not a lot. All I know about the old mayor is that he raised all our taxes. That's all I know about him. And I don't like him. <laughs> well, the last mayor was a woman. No, no, uh, no. The last, uh, come on. Brian, <laughs> come on, guys. Just got to laugh. We could have convinced yeah, him. That was true. Yeah. Well, come oh, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's two mayors ago. Again, again, that's because I'm too, and I'm she's too great. She's it. a big comedy fan. She we is. met her. I met her. We yeah. met her at Zanies oh, yeah. a few times. Yeah. Megan Barry. Yeah. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Y'all just want to keep going? Yeah. You don't need to shut it down. Nah. I just need to blow my nose. Okay. Yeah. Well, sorry. Yeah, I think we all want that. Okay. Well, um, I'll just go I'll go on with uh, Jasmine Lozano. Yeah. I've noticed that Brian has been corrected for putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable multiple times. My mom does this too. <laughs> she says six flags uh, instead of six flags. I don't I don't get it. I don't know how to read that. And after correcting her for decades, I've just given up. I think you read it correctly. I think it's supposed to the emphasis is supposed to be on six. Oh, six flags instead of six flags. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe not quite that strong, but yeah, that's the point they're making. Six flags. I don't know how to do it. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. So she she not a lot of like she just really wants to let you know there's flags there, but it doesn't really matter how many. I could see me that could have I could see me doing that. How would you say it? I mean, I could see it being like her mom, like six flags instead of six. Let's see, I can't even. I don't. Yes, yeah, I, I get. I guess I, I get it. Like uh, the um, thing, um, Foo Fighters. That's right. Yeah, no, we, right. There was one other day that Aaron. Aaron, what was that word you corrected me on just the other day? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> which, which one? Where I put emphasis on the wrong word. Oh, you do it all the time. Oh, okay. Well, that cleared it up. You well, you, words. you added us. <laughs> feel like you added a syllable to a Sorry word the that, other day, me. but I don't. I don't know about the emphasis. I feel there. like I've been fighting this thing. I just want somebody. I don't know if this is medically possible. I want someone to just poke a hole in my face and just let it kind of. I think it's drain out. You mm. get cats. It's not cats though. I've had cats for a while, and it's it's. You just, got a new one though. I got a new one. I mean, four months ago, dude. 
I was on a plane the other day. Guy had a full size lab across the uh, across the really no cage, not just hanging out and everybody ever it's across from me everybody all the flight attendants are like acting like they'd never seen a dog before was it They're a friendly like, dog did it, it behave was fine. itself it was fine okay but i'm like my sinuses were just on fire really the whole time just yeah. from a dog being there yeah yeah maybe that is what's happening i'm ready to move know. to a petless society what's the country where they have no pets is there one i don't know i've never heard that. that i think you're gonna have to antarctica where they have no pets or they're not allowed to have pets? Either way. <laughs> I, mean, no. I think you're going to have to give away some freedoms if you want to yeah. live in a place where you're not allowed to have pets. Yeah, that's true. We might need to pick up the pace on some of these. All right. Okay, yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. Look at us, dude. Sorry about that. We're used to a two-hour podcast. I know. We're used to really stretching out. Kyle Scott, at the risk of sounding like a jerk, how often do you guys find yourself bombing in front of an audience? Bates, you can take this one. <laughs> Does it happen often? <laughs> do you bomb less as you get more chances to do stand-up? How do you recover from bombing in front of an audience? On a serious note, I appreciate you all persisting through those times when you bomb. Um, look, bombing happens all the time. You have bad sets. I, I don't think um, like the sort of caricature of a bomb where it's like just a disaster, that's few and far between. And as you get better at comedy, you just learn how to handle that better. And I think you're in fewer situations where that's possible where like the setup is a nightmare, like that corporate gig I had right. a few weeks ago. Yeah. Those don't happen that often. Um, but yeah, you still, you know, not every set's great. Yeah, because I don't bomb in the traditional sense at all anymore, but I've also uh, invented a, a wave and a, I say we're having a good time, right. which helps me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have some situations, like you're talking about corporate gig, where it's like, it's a tough situation. Uh -huh. But even then, I'm not bombing. But I, I got so much material now that I've developed over the years to where I'm like, all right, this is not working. Maybe I sometimes I think I get a little can get a little weird where it's like people know me. They buy tickets to come see me. And then I'm in a corporate environment where it's like there's a chance that nobody or only a few people in the audience know who I am. Yeah, yeah. And now they're like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> so I go back to some of the older. Sure. Uh, you know, stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, my last two bombs have been two of my higher paying corporate gigs. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. You think those are going to be the best, but often they're not. Well, the buyers, uh, I find in those situations, know you, know your comedy, love you, they, they, they <laughs> enjoy you. So they reach out and they get you hired. And then, you know, you just. Nobody else does. You're just dealing with a room full of people that may not even be fans of comedy. Right. And oftentimes a corporate gig, it's like. They're in there listening to people talk all day. Mm -hmm. So even though you're funnier at talking than the rest of the people, they're still tired of hearing talking. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I agree. And then some guys coming in talking about, you know, oh, I used to drink a lot. And they're like, okay, well, we still drink a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blocked out right now. <laughs> I've pooped in a David's bridal. <laughs> yeah. 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 We are David's bridal. Huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, whose turn? Elijah Does, Brown. Yeah. I'm nearly 40 years old. How old is too old to start a career in stand-up? Two in a row for Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Am I crazy for wanting to pursue this? Yes. I say this. If you have kids that are young, yes. I if was, you're single, go for it. Well, yeah, I was, was going to say the same thing. Yeah. I started when I was 35, but I was single. Um, to me, that's more important than your age yeah. is your family situation. If you have young kids, your life situation, your yeah, life situation, job yeah. and everything, because yeah, you're yeah. not going to just become a star overnight. It's going to take a long time. You're not going to make any money. It right. took me. I mean, really, from from the time I went full time, it took, you know, four years to make any kind of money. But I was already doing it, you know, six years prior to going full time. So mm -hmm. you're looking at ten years before I actually was making any money with comedy. But I do have, I'll, I'll, I'll offer a counter to that. In Nashville alone, I can think of people who have great jobs in a family and they come to open mics and they've gotten very funny and they get to do shows and travel a little bit and, uh, and, and That's true. enjoy doing comedy. And their kids hate them. No, I mean. <laughs> He's a, I'm thinking of like uh, Bo, our friend Bo. Who's like a who was a doctor and he yeah. has adult children now. But yeah, he has adult kids. Yeah, I guess forty. Yeah. You, you might yeah. not have. So adult Bo, children yeah, Bo's yet. in a, yeah, Bo is also I think retired. 
uh, and has made himself a ton of money. Probably, uh-huh. I don't know his bank account. Well, but probably made himself a ton of money. <laughs> at forty, his kids could be close to grown. Yeah, could be. Yeah, and then yeah, that yeah. would make it easier. I mean, Brian Covington is a very funny comic here in Nashville. Gets to yes. do great shows, but he's got a great family life. Right. And right. his wife uh, comes to a lot of his shows. She's like does. very supportive. Yeah. So that's a big part of it too. Is yeah. your is your is your wife like into it? And does she understand how much you'll be gone? Right. So I think the short answer is no, it's not too old, but it's going to cause, depending on your life situation, it's going to force you to make some sacrifices yeah. and ask with yourself, your time. Are you an alcoholic? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> if you are, it's going to get worse. <laughs> That's I ask for myself sure. that every day. <laughs> now, how about this last name, Brian? I want to see you tackle this. This is crazy. Cosmo Krumenknocker. I think so. Okay. I like it. I think it's fat. Cosmo is a great name. Yeah. Cosmo Kramer. Cosmo Kramer. Yeah. That is, you think that's a reference to that? I don't know. Okay. Um, is it my turn to read? Yeah. yeah I think so. I, I saw Dusty at the Tempe Improv. A few hours before the show, I got the wild idea to dress like Dusty, to just sit in the crowd and laugh and enjoy the show. My wife talked me out of it, but I am really regretting listening to her now. I just wanted to know what Dusty would think of performing in front of a crowd full of imitators. Would you be into it? Well, I'll tell you this. I, uh, I've i done shows all over the place, and people sometimes will go, some of the wait staff will go, uh, oh, there's people in the audience dressed like you. And then I'll make a joke about it and then n- get no real reaction. And then after the show, find out they're not dressed like me. That's just how they dress. <laughs> uh, so a lot of people- It was a homeless guy who wandered yeah, in. Yeah, a lot of people look like me. Yeah, and depending yeah, on yeah. where you're at, when I go to Florida, there'll be a lot of people in the audience that looks like me. Yeah, And it's like, people just look like this. And that's what, when people think I'm ripping off Judah Friedlander out here, it's like, a lot of people look like me. And, uh, but- What about that guy? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this I, Cosmo. but once in a while people do dress like me yeah. and I am into it. I wouldn't mind if the whole audience was dressed like me, I'd go, well, <laughs> at least these guys are my fans and let's get into it. Yeah, it's yeah. about to get weird in this show. Cause you're into what I do. <laughs> there was a guy in Lexington at your show that we did that was very much. Oh, looking like you. oh yeah. yeah. yeah dude. Oh, he even had the belt with the name on it. Yeah. You have a very yeah. easily, I don't know the word. It's easy to do you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Costume wise. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you have a good time. You dress like me and then you go, this is fun. But if you had to dress up as me or Brian or even Nate, what would you what would you even do? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't I don't know that there would be a I mean I mean, if you dress like you, you're you're like almost dressing like me, but you know, you got a hat and a beard. Right. And Take a some hoodie. of those some of those leaves you've been collecting. Yeah. Maybe turn the hoodie around backwards, put some popcorn in the hoodie. That was an old reference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that would be a Were way. you saying like a fat suit? <laughs> Is that what you meant just now? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, stuff some leaves. Yeah. One of the sumo wrestler suits. All right. Those are the comments. Thank you, everybody. Thank Let's you, everybody. get into it. Yeah, we got I mean, some time. Well, we got, really. uh, got a good 10 minutes no, to talk about no, furniture. No, we're going to no. stretch out a little bit. Yeah, here. we are. Um, all right. This week, we're talking about furniture. I got to ask you guys, when you come home and have a hard night, hard week, yeah. whatever, do you have a place that is your designated place to sit? I don't, and I wish I did, because I feel like that was a hallmark of my childhood. Was my, yeah. my dad had his chair, right? Yeah. You come home and you sit in your chair. Was it a recliner? They like a lazy boy, like a single. Lazy boy, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it looked like uh, just that feeling must be great. I've never had that. And I wish I did. Do you have a chair, Dusty? Now, this is what I do. I come home after a hard weekend on the road, and my wife goes, here, take this baby, yeah. and uh, I need to do something with myself. I've been here with kids all weekend, mm-hmm. and I just I need just a little bit of time to be myself. Mm-hmm. And then so I'm on the couch, if I'm lucky, with two kids, and it's great. I love it. <laughs> I do love it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, oh, I'm tired. She's like, well, <laughs> no, she's like, I'm tired of the new. You've been out hanging out with your buddies, having a blast, having a blast, <laughs> and I've been here. And she's like, I love being with the kids, but I'm, you know, you need a break every I now. I need a and break. Then. Do you have a chair, Brian? No, I have a spot on the couch, but a spot on the couch. That's where you take all your videos. I've seen <laughs> your spot on the couch. Oh, I think I know the yeah. spot on your couch too. Yeah, yeah. your the, dog and your and your daughter there. Yeah, the, the yeah, and end at the end, yeah. right with yeah. the armrest there. Yeah, I gotta say, I think a couch is overrated. That's gonna surprise. The two of y'all that I think that. Yeah. But wouldn't you rather have three individual seats? 
Yeah. Than a couch. I mean, I do have some yeah. comfortable chairs. We have what, a. Uh, what are you talking about? You don't want an armrest <laughs> with each arm? I have an armrest on the couch. You want to sit that close? Let's say you have to put three people on the couch. You want to sit that close to another person? Well, I mean. Well, maybe his wife. There's not three adults in our house. Okay, then why have a couch? Um, sometimes I like to sit there, and then if there's nobody, I'll just stretch out and keep watching television. Lay down? Yeah. Okay. Before I got right. married, I had this setup going. I had uh, I had a couch, and I had taken all the back cushions off, uh-huh. and then I had a king-size blanket that I would put on it, and then I could, you could, I could lay on one part of the king-size blanket blanket and then pull the other side oh, over me nice. so i'd created like a little pocket yeah. and then i would have a pillow and then i had a wireless keyboard and mouse where i had a, and then i had a big monitor for a computer and i could just kick back watch youtube videos <laughs> and you know <laughs> you know and just for hours and yeah, that was before yeah. i was married before i had kids yeah and i could just do that so maybe you're right about Sitting on a couch, but the whole laying, watching TV on a couch, I mean, that is where it's at. Okay. And I could, right. this was back when YouTube was great. I mean, you watch, <laughs> you watch some, you know, crazy it's video. It's shark now. You it? watch a crazy video and then it rolls you right into the next one. Yeah. Now you watch a crazy video. The next one is some mainstream media plug in in there. And I'm like, well, I'm not trying to watch this. <laughs> I'm trying to get away from this. Mm-hmm. About the moon landing. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I you know I learned a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember, dude. It was the best couch you ever had. I remember. Sophomore year of college, a friend of mine's older brother had a couch Yeah, and he, at his apartment. And he was like, I'm graduating. If y'all want this couch, you can have it for free. And we showed up thinking it'd be this, you know, little futon or whatever. We walk in. It's the nicest couch. Oh, it's like yeah. too nice for a college kid's apartment. Yeah. Probably. Fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred dollar couch, and we were like, "Oh, dude, and it was huge! It like took up half our dorm room." But we carried that thing back. Oh, you're in a dorm room, and we carried it to our dorm room, and it was, I mean, the envy of the whole floor. Oh, yeah, dude. they have this nice couch <laughs> like this. You know, it wasn't big enough. They had to do it on a tilt. Well, it bare. I mean, we I brought a tape measure. It yeah. barely fit in the room, and I think it actually compromised how far the door could open. But it was one of those like. <laughs> We're willing to make the sacrifice. Yeah. It's that nice of a couch. And I actually retract my statement about couches earlier because I'm remembering how good it felt to just lounge on, get I'm, zontal on that couch, dude. Yeah. After I'm, class or something. I'm I, thinking that's the problem. You, you, The couch was too good. Yeah. And now no couch compares. And no couch has compared to that. To that memory. That. And yeah. you're like, couches are overrated. Oh, man. That was a great couch. Mm, yeah. We used to go back and just watch Maury uh, after yeah. class, dude. Underrated yeah. show. I miss that. I love couch. the show. There was a, uh, there's like a screenwriting. I was l- listening to some person talking about screenwriting and they're talking about when you're combing through your life for, for things like stories about your life. A good way to think about it is uh, the cars that you've driven. Think about all the cars you've driven and that'll yeah. place you in your oh, head yeah. in those different times of your life. But I think it works for couches too. Oh yeah. Cause even just talking about it is taking me back. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking about all the times I that's spent interesting. On that couch. I do want to do that now. I've done it with cars. Yeah. I do it with music, but I, I've had a lot of couches too. I've lived in a lot of places. Yeah, I'm guessing. I, I mean, wild a wild range of quality of couches yeah. for you too. You know, we had a couch one time that we sewed or we sawed the back legs off of it. You know, those little ones. Yeah, we sawed those off so that it would have a little tilt to it and had a real like when you sat in it you really lean back in it oh a tilt backwards yeah okay i was saying tilt forward no, sounds no. like a, a nightmare <laughs> yeah 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 a real <laughs> tilt backwards okay. yeah have you ever in the time of your life the couch has been your bed yeah to some degree yeah growing up i lived in a two-bedroom trailer with four people all together so the couch was your bed yeah for a long time yeah I just meant as an adult, like, you ever had a... <laughs> Not some sad, poor childhood yeah. idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're looking for more, like, fun stuff. <laughs> I thought I'd be, like, in your 20s, me and a bunch of buddies, and that was my... But no, uh, that was your childhood. No, nah, never as an adult. No, <clears throat> I didn't. My, my senior year of college, I had just a mattress on the floor. That's about as close as I've gotten. I've it, had a mattress on the floor looking. a couple of times, yeah. Yeah, sad looking. When you had a couch in your dorm room, did you guys have bunk beds? We had, 
I, my sophomore year, I had a quad. So we had, we had a common room in right. between. Right. So we put bunk, we actually lofted uh, the beds and in each side of it. So then the middle, you just had room for the couch and a TV or whatever you wanted in there. Mm -hmm. And half that room was that couch. I mean, it was so like deep oh, yeah. that uh, it was cumbersome in a lot of ways, but it was, it was awesome, man. Oh, I see. Yeah. I had a mat. I lived in a house when I first moved to Nashville, and I had a queen size mattress and box springs. And the stairwell was so small that I couldn't get the box spring up. Yeah. So Joe Kelly helped me. We <laughs> sawed the box springs and folded it. <laughs> and then carried it up the stairs and then unfolded it out. It worked great. Really? Yeah. Full awesome. the couch and a half. <laughs> yeah. No, no, not couch. Yeah, the, the, box springs. The, the yeah. box springs. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. crazy. What's the longest you've ever had a mattress? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a, a joke about it. I mean, I had a mattress that I think my sister gave to me. I bought, I bought a trailer that she used to live in. And I think the mattress was still in there. Who knows how long they had it. And then I had it for a couple of years in that trailer. And then I took it to Charleston and it moved with me several places. And this was when I was an alcoholic and I was living a, a rough life and a lot of things happened to that mattress. And uh, I, uh, I moved from one place to another and I flew off the back of the truck, yeah. landed on a bridge, got ran over. <laughs> I picked it up. It was all bent up. Yeah. And I kept that. Until I quit drinking, I had that mattress and wow. I threw that mattress in a dumpster and it was so worn out that when I threw it in the dumpster, it was able to just fold over. <laughs> I mean, I bet I had it. What would that? That would have been 2012. I bet I had it for, you know, uh, 14 years. Yeah. And then who knows how long it had been around before then. Yeah. But. Decades. Yeah. Yeah. I had I, my like a. Uh, older brother's bed when i took his room when he moved out mm -hmm. that mattress was still around i think it's still in my parents house oh uh, yeah i mean 30 years maybe <laughs> oh man yeah it's maybe reduced, i guess now yeah just flip it over every now and then uh, yeah. anytime it feels weird just flip it over dude flip it on the side whatever that, you need to do <laughs> the average age of a mattress is seven years okay seven they do uh Gain weight over time. Yeah. Oh, they gain a lot of weight. Mine yeah. was very heavy and <laughs> flimsy. You can only guess why they gain weight. Skin, <laughs> skin cells, yeah. dust mites. That's for the mattress. What makes them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back to couches. I don't know if there's a difference between a sofa and a couch, but I wouldn't be able to tell you. I feel like it would be in the north, they call it a sofa. In the south, we call it a couch. Yeah. That's what I would think. A sofa's average life expectancy is 2,958 days. That's roughly eight years. A sofa's life expectancy? Okay. A sofa's never end. Yeah. Uh, we eat on average 13 times a month. We eat on the couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a little low. Yeah. I want to say I'm on, I'm on the right end of that bell curve for sure. <laughs> yeah. I would only say 13 because I'm gone a good bit of days. Yeah. Is there a piece of furniture that you've always wanted for your house that you've yet to get besides the walk-in cooler? I guess that would be a piece <laughs> no, of furniture. That's, really. that's furniture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, I don't know. I'd like I'd like a lazy boy. There's no room in my house right now to right. have like a lazy boy chair, but I would want I want a throne. Every man needs yeah, a throne. Yeah, I would in like his house, that too. Right? Just to kick back, you, know, you tell the kids you're not allowed on it. Mm -hmm. You know, just sit there and complain about stuff, mm -hmm. you know, just be, yeah, yeah, it sounds great. I would like that. I got a small recliner, mm -hmm. um, you know, that I like, but a nice, thinking about it, I may go get one. <laughs> Okay. Tonight. Yeah, I got a Netflix special now. I may go get a There recliner. you go. Yeah, you can go I get don't a chair a, if you want it. I don't have a Lexus SUV that a lot of people in the uh, Nate Land uh, Facebook group think I have. They, Should we clarify that? Uh, yeah, let's clear it. Dusty up. and I did a video for with Rated Red where we ate hot chicken around Nashville. Mm -hmm. In the video, Dusty picks me up in a Lexus. Yeah. And there are a lot of comments. Can't believe Dusty's driving a Lexus. Mm -hmm. Didn't strike me as a Lexus SUV guy. Mm -hmm. But what's the real story about? Well, that? you know, the rated red people had the Lexus all wired up with uh, cameras, the GoPros and yeah. microphones. So they, and everything. so I just drove their car. Yes. So that wasn't Dusty's personal car in the video. That yes. needs to be made clear. Yes. Yeah. I drive. I have a Toyota Tacoma. 
and I have a, lot, a Mercedes SUV. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of times, a lot of times, I'm driving a Toyota Corolla out here. Yeah, I love that car. I, we call it the zipper. I can just zip around in that thing, and it is great. Yeah. I don't worry about getting it dinged up. Right. It's been dinged up a bit. You've been in some wrecks with it? Not wrecks, but I, it gets dinged up. Well, if you haven't seen the video, it's a very funny video that these guys are in. So go check that out. Yes, it sir. is funny. It turned out very, very good. And I know when you're not eating hot chicken, you're eating HelloFresh. Yeah, I don't even like to eat a lot of fried chicken, but I do do it, though. Hello, fre- Hello folks, to HelloFresh. <laughs> <laughs> With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That is why it's America's number one meal kit. Whether you're trying to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is there to help you do all three. With fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like, delivered right to your door. Do you try to sit down... Do you actually do you actually try to sit down and eat dinner around a table? What about those nights when your schedule is packed? Turn on HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals, including their 15-minute recipes designed to help minimize mealtime stress. That's even quicker than delivery. Wow. Hannah and I love HelloFresh. <laughs> I like how clean it is. No microwaves needed. There you go. All fresh and home cooked meals. I do like that. I hate a microwave. I'm right. not into it. Right. You know, and uh, you know, maybe maybe you like it because it's quick. You're like, you know what? Who cares about my overall health, well being? I'll put stuff in the microwave. Yeah, yeah. I like when you don't have to do it. Right, right. And yeah. if it's and if it's as good as HelloFresh is, don't spoil it by using the microwave. Mm-hmm. Take a little time, guys. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NateLandFree and use code NateLandFree for free <laughs> breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast breakfast for life at he- <laughs> at HelloFresh.com slash NateLandFree yeah. with code NateLandFree. Yeah. America's number one meal kit. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the television. You got a certain place when you moved into your current house, the TV's got to go there. Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, I took some time to figure out where I want the TV. We don't have a TV in our living room. We do have a bonus room where mm-hmm. we have the playroom, mm-hmm. and we don't we don't have a TV in the living room. And we do spend a lot of time there, where me and the family sit in this room and we talk to each other and we don't watch TV. That's nice. But then we do have, you know, a room with a TV. And yeah. uh, and yeah. I had a spot. Now, it's got to stay there because I drilled giant holes in the wall to hang a TV hanger. Yeah. And I never wanted to move it. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I like a, I like the TV to be in a hot spot, you know? High up on the wall? High as it can get. It's, it's a bit of a, you know, the wall kind of starts to tilt a oh. bit. So... Mm-hmm. The last few years, I've been obsessed with this subreddit called TV Too High. Okay. Where you, uh, where they basically roast people who have their television too high in their house. Now, ideally, the television should be eye level, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. you shouldn't have to look back like you're at an IMAX. Theater. Right. You don't want to hurt your neck. The problem is, the instinct is to put the television right above a fireplace. Yeah. Or on the mantle, but mm-hmm. that's usually too high. So we yeah. have to rethink that. This subreddit is a blast dude and Mine's it's, not it's that completely high. changed what do you think about like that particular height i'd say what? that's a common uh, height a lot, that, let's like, on a coffee table there oh geez uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't show that one my bad my bad everybody we won't show that let me find a let me find a good all ex- of these have been fine so far well hold on okay i don't know what that was <laughs> yeah yeah uh, this is Reddit, so I'm sorry. Like, here's a good, too ex- high. good example. That's too high. But, but but let's go back to that one for a second. Okay. If you have that view, don't be watching TV. Exactly. Sit we'll on the couch on and look at your phone. Put it on a different wall. <laughs> right. Look right. At- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, I'd say even here, I'll say this. The television's pretty high in Nate's, Nate's place, but they have a mount that you can pull. Yeah, down. they have a nice adjustable. You can pull it down to get at a, at a good height, right? Yeah. But this has totally changed the way I go to friends' houses, and I just 
not judge, but I'm so aware. This is like perfect height. For yeah, me. I think so. Right here. Yeah. I'm right above. I mean, it's mounted. It doesn't even need to be mounted. It's right above the television stand. That's yeah. where you want it. I our, agree. <clears throat> our TV is above the mantle, above the fireplace. Oh, it brutal. Is a, it's <laughs> it's uh, now in our defense, though, we cut the back legs off our couch. So it tilts. Exactly. So we're kind of looking directly at exactly. it. Exactly. That's listen. what you want to do. I was listening to that. How much of a tilt are we? Th- was that a joke? That was a callback to Dusty's. I know yeah. that. You don't, you know, Ruth ain't having the legs <laughs> cut off the couch. <laughs> Eleanor with a saw. Uh, yeah. Bates yeah. sitting in with one of those Adirondack chairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I was just going to say, I looked up TVs, current prices, because I had no idea. And of course, there's a lot of deals right now for the Super Bowl. That's when they try to get you. The most expensive TVs I could see that you could buy, like in a normal store, like Best Buy or whatever, was five thousand dollars. Five thousand. And what is it? Like ninety-eight inch, four K, five K, whatever the top K is. I mean, what kind of room are you dealing with when you have a ninety-eight inch? T- you ever go to somebody's house and they have a huge TV, but the living room's real small? It's like you don't need this. Why are we? I can't see. I agree. I need I sunglasses to I watch TV. Okay. I love. I want to turn my head to see stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah. on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be like, oh, it's down there. You remember when they were the TVs had a little bend on it for a second? Yeah, I feel like yeah. they were trying to make that a thing. Curve, and maybe they still are. But now, I'm, computer monitors they still make curved in a yeah. lot of ways. If you get like a big, you can get a huge wide monitor. Yeah. that's curved that kind of envelops you in it. Oh yeah, that's fun. Okay. It's tougher to do in a TV situation. Yeah. I read where desk chairs were basically invented <clears throat> by Charles Darwin. Oh. He was doing a lot of research, and he wanted wheels on his chair so he could quickly go back and forth on his stuff. From what to what, do you think? He said a, a bunch of desks? From a beaker to, I don't know, whatever <laughs> Charles Darwin was doing. <laughs> He's but, trying to help in that evolution of hunching our backs. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, he was pre- <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was <clears throat> that, that is interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah, he never gets credit for that. You know, he just gets credit for other stuff. Do you guys ever check into a hotel and be like, "What is this?" Oh, all like, the time. Yeah, this is. Oh, I've yeah. been chronicling this a little bit on uh, on social media. It's been a lot of fun for me. I've just had a lot of bad hotel furniture lately. I'm gonna see I what think y'all. It dusty every time. I think it's not plugged in up there. What is or. No. No signal. Something. Sometimes I'll check into a hotel yeah. and there'll be like a desk and a couch and I'll be like, oh, this is awesome. I got a lot of places to sit. Right. And then I spend the entire weekend sitting on the bed. I of do course. Too. I do yeah. too. Now, what do you think about this chair? I was at a hotel <laughs> and this was just set up in the corner. <laughs> it looks like an ottoman they kind of threw a half of a back onto. They're like, we got all these ottomans and all these extra backrest. And I want to go, what do you expect anyone to do? You can't even set a suitcase on it. Yeah. It's just a waste. I had Here's another one. This is a bit of a fainting couch. <laughs> I mean, this took up half of a of a Hampton Inn. This is, uh, I think they call this a chaise lounge, and it's uh, this is not a particularly good design. That are you serious? I think so. I've never heard of a chaise lounge, and I don't. Is that oh, how you say it? A chaise? Is that how you say it? A chaise? I think it's Chase. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. I'm, I'm a bit, a bit, a bit of a debate about. I would have turned too. around. For sure. But this is, it's like a long, it looks almost like a therapist chair, but there's only a back on one side of it. And you go, what do you envision? This is the kind of thing for Brian, like like sitting on the end of the couch. He's got one armrest. Well, you want to ask like the, whoever designed this hotel room, what do you envision me doing? I get in. I don't know what they expect me to do with my suitcase, but I just sit on that like uh, Kate Winslet in uh, Titanic. That's what I think of. It paid me like one of your French girls. This is That's what, what I, it looks like. This is what I think was happening. Yeah. They are on some <laughs> kind of website for hotel furniture, right. and they're clicking along, and they go, ooh, this is on sale. And then they <laughs> 50% off. That's and then they, all the thought. And that- they're like, oh, we could get a lot of these. They're like, it looks good. I don't think that looks good. At all. I, I'm saying what, what what hotel is this? Uh I don't I don't remember. An upscale hotel? No. Because it looks like somebody trying to look more middle upscale. of the road. I would say middle of the road. Yeah. Uh, this it, is like a Hampton Inn level. If this were right placed, it could be placed on the wall in a way that, that it shouldn't be in this corner like that. 
It should be up against the wall. Well, here's what you do. You take it out. And then my reaction would have been, wow, this hotel room is very spacious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of it's cramped and I don't know what that is in the corner. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If you guys were president, <clears throat> how would you decorate the White House? Like what's one Dusty Slay touch? I think about this a lot because, A, I watch the West Wing all the time and they talk about it a little bit. When you show up and you get the Oval Office, you can put anything you want in it. Basically, any national museum, you can go take whatever you want, just put it in the Oval Office. So here's this is what Joe Biden's looks like right now. You can get any paintings you want in there, any desk, any furniture. You can arrange the couches any way you want. And what would you have in there? I'd thing? get some old couches and I'd get some lava lamps <coughs> and probably some Salvador Dali paintings and I'd make it look like real like a stoner uh kind of kind of room there and uh -huh. uh, just be like a my trailer looked in the early 2000s. Some blinds. Yeah, kind of some blinds. Just just instead old. of the door those beads that yeah, hang yeah, from it, you gotta walk through yeah. that. Yeah, and 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 just like an old rug, a fabric poster of Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, in there. yeah, no paint. I said Salvador Dali paintings. I mean posters. Oh, poster. Yeah, like I'd get like that Pink Floyd one with all the women sitting on the side of the tub, and right. it had the you know, and not framed, not framed, Duct thumb tape, duct tape or thumbtacks. <laughs> yeah, where in the thumbtacks in the oval, and a lot of holes in the paint poster where you can see you've moved it a lot. Uh huh. Maybe some. <laughs> Empty liquor bottles uh, on the shelf. On the shelf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and not even an expensive liquor brand. Just no. something you're proud yeah, that you're Evan yeah. Williams, Jack, early times. Or maybe like Jack Daniels Honey. Something yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you don't remember the good times you had. Yeah. Yeah, take down all those statues. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. From the be, Museum or, of Modern Art. Or, you know, put like a, uh, you know, like a, a beanie on this head. Right. Uh, some sunglasses. Sure. You Maybe know. a mini fridge. Put <laughs> yeah. <that>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go to Goodwill and get you some stuff. Yeah. 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 Desk wise, no desk. You just be on the couch. Yeah, maybe a folding table a where we would be playing beer pong. <laughs> 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 folding table. Yeah. Mm. This desk, this is the most famous desk probably of all time. You know what this desk is called? The presidential desk right here? The Roosevelt. Pretty darn close, I dude. Do, yes. Yeah, the Resolute desk. Oh, mm. wow. Have you heard that? No. Before, this is the desk that most of the modern presidents have used, though you can choose. Some people chose not to use it. It was made from, I think I said, I can't remember. The, the, the uh, Resolute was a ship. Who chose not to use it? Yeah, and what do they do with it? Put it in the closet? Yeah, there's a lot of storage at the White House. You go, I'd rather not use that particular particular desk. Oh, it weighs 1,300 pounds. Yeah. And there's a red button used to call AIDS. There's a red button that, that you've probably heard of a red button on the desk. It became famous for people thinking it was like, that's the nuclear button. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Right, where you want to launch nukes at Russia. You just hit the button. <laughs> yeah. But really, all it's ever done is just call somebody to come in. Yeah. The, the the legend is and is that Trump just it was just a Diet Coke button. Oh uh, yeah. He would press it and then somebody would come in with a Diet Coke on a silver platter. Yeah. And he would press that all the time. And who wouldn't do that's what I'm saying. If you're the president, like you're like I got some things like you may maybe maybe a little quirky thing. What would your red button be on your fold out table? Oh man, <laughs> what would my red button be? <laughs> Let me think about that. I don't know. Someone to come change the TV. Uh, you know, like the old school days, my dad had a little intercom at his house. Yeah. And he would, he had a satellite dish. Mm -hmm. And there was a, every, he had remotes for everything, but there was one button that he would have to push to go turn the satellite dish off to go back to regular TV yeah. that he didn't have a button for. Uh, so he would hit the intercom. He'd go, hey, come in the living room. And I'd come in. He goes, push that button up there. <laughs> 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 so that's what you would have yeah something like that yeah here's me at a uh at the resolute desk wow and uh that's not the real one obviously that's at the george bush presidential library in dallas texas but oh, they have okay. a full-size replica of the oval office in there and they let you sit at the resolute desk wow. i gotta tell you you do feel powerful yeah. Yeah, you look powerful. I think the desk, I think all of that, the chair, all of that is important because you, you sit at it and you're like, all right. That's a nice desk. I may keep the desk. Okay. But still do, all you know, beer stuff. pong of sorts on the desk. Beer pong on the Resolute desk. I don't drink crazy. anymore, but just the idea, we would just do it with, you know, sweet tea. Well, or nobody whatever. plays beer pong with beer anymore. Oh, yeah. 
Now they play with just water in the cups, and you drink a beer while you play. But nobody's filling the cups up. That's weak. (laughs) That's weak. (laughs) I think it's much cleaner. That's what it's all about. Overall, better experience. It is about the bit of the germs too. You know, it's like, hey, you're like, you know, when when somebody hits it, it, not only is it a punishment that you have to drink the beer, but you also, you know, you have to drink the germs, you know, be better at the game. Right. And we would always put it in its own solo cup of water and and it's running around. Yeah. yeah. That's how you clean it For half a second and then you take it out. Yeah, that's how you clean it off. Yeah. There was no COVID back then when we were doing that. I'll tell you that. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) What about a pool table? Would you consider that furniture? No, I don't think so. I think, do we, would we, what is, what would you, what would the definition of furniture? I think it's, you have to, interact with it in some like sit in it or on it or i would say I yes know. to a pool table being furniture furniture tv wouldn't be yeah. fit that definition t i don't think tv's furniture oh you don't no okay well i but think i think like t- your couch t- and everything in relation to where the tv set up is a furniture discussion but tv okay. has gone through this evolution to where at some point you know tv used to be in a big wooden box that sat on the floor so it was kind it was yeah. almost like the resolute desk yep and it was that heavy uh-huh. and now you know it just can hang on the wall so it might have lost its furniture status that's maybe. true because as a kid that's where we put a lot of stuff on yeah it was the big oh my TV. mom had yeah. her christmas village on top of the tv you know she had set up all her little houses yeah. my grandmother had, had on top of a she had a grand piano and there is a million things on top of that. Piano. Oh yeah, picture frames, mm-hmm. plants, and is everything. that furniture? The way she was using it, and you but do itself, sit down at now, the piano. You do sit down. To, I guess the piano seat is furniture, yeah. but not the piano. Right. She's I guess by that definition, a guitar is furniture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A flute. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I don't think you go to a furniture store looking for a saxophone. You got flutes in here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have flutes at uh-huh. a furniture store. Uh-huh. Are you kidding me? What about a pinball machine? Same thing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't I mean, think pinball machines furniture, but there's something about a pool I table. It. I get it. Yeah. You got the wooden, you got wooden, you got leather pockets. And oh, you think you have a nice pool table. A nice pool table, yeah. Ping pong table, no? No. Yeah, it have to be very nice. I might put a ping pong table in the Oval Office. I'd be. There's fun. plenty of room in there, and that's kind of a fun. You know, some, when world leaders come, you make decisions based on who wins the ping pong match. Well, you go. It's a fun icebreaker. Yeah, yeah. You know, bring a king of over whatever, and go. you go. Let's play a little game yeah. real quick. Yeah, you know, it'll help. With North Korea, they love ping pong. Yeah, and, you know, if we had a ping pong table in the Oval Office, I find it. Easy to believe that presidents have putted balls in the Oval Office, oh, yeah. right? You know, into a, a nice glass. Yeah. What's the difference between that and a ping pong table? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're probably right. Mm-hmm. I think uh, like a Stairmaster or treadmill is probably one of the – it becomes furniture. Sure, sure, sure. I have – I just got a treadmill in front of my desk. Oh, yeah? Because I have a standing desk. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, really? Which are increasingly common, I think. But I have yeah, I one in so. my in my house. And I just leave it up. And I put a, a walking pad. It's called it's a treadmill that you can't run on it, basically. But, dude, it's awesome, man. I, you, we have I, a I think treadmill it's going to change my life. We have a treadmill really? at home that yeah. we use. I mean, we love it. We love our treadmill. We use it all the time. You put it on a desk in front of it or anything? Or we have a TV. You... We have a TV that's too high. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> out there. Yeah. Like yeah. That. All day, yeah. But I, I'll, we, I'll sit there and I gotta answer emails or something or or whatever. I'll just walk as I'm doing it, and you kind of forget that you're doing it, man. Yeah, and I'll walk eight miles. I don't believe just doing rapping stuff. The whole time. Just doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Losing yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just like, doing. How mom spaghetti get up yeah. here? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you have a lot of misspellings because you're walking and hitting the enter. I did have to find the right speed to walk at where it was possible <laughs> to type because yeah. I was when you walk as fast as you want to walk. It's yeah. a. It's I can't do anything on yeah. the, on the computer, but. <laughs> If I'm at about 2.6 miles per hour, I can work and not even realize I'm walking. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty great. I mean, they say uh, sitting is the new smoking. Sitting is the new smoking. Have you heard that, Dusty? Not ne- well, I guess, but not nearly as cool though. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> I had someone message me about how much they were disappointed in my special that I had I glorified cigarettes. And I'm like, do you not really get the irony of what I'm saying here? I mean, I'm 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 pretending as if I'm glorifying cigarettes, sure. but I'm also being like, I quit. You know, if I thought cigarettes were so great, would I have quit? Yeah. As a, you know, I like doing it, but obviously it's horrible for you. Of yes. course. It made me feel awful. Of course. Yeah. Do I love it? Yeah, of course I do. But uh, <laughs> is it cool? Yeah. Yeah. Should he, you be watching Dusty Special for health advice? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And get, do you know that we put out that clip of the green beans, the Western Citizen green beans? Uh-huh. And people are arguing about how much they eat the green beans at a buffet. Yeah. I'm not saying you don't have some sometimes, but you don't go, you know what? The Golden Corral has really good green beans. They're not the star of the show. Yeah, dude. I think I'd like to pop in there and get the green beans. Exactly. And they're like, well, why would they why would they refill them? And I'm like, I don't know. Over time, maybe they get dehydrated and yeah. they dry out in the bottom and you gotta pour some more in there. It's like, don't try to argue with the jokes here, mm-hmm. you know? You know, McDonald's has cinnamon rolls. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I'm sure they're good. And you may get it once you in a while. You may get it once in a while, but if they take cinnamon rolls off the menu, nobody's going, Well, there's no reason to go to McDonald's anymore. Exactly. Right. That's, what, that's all we're saying. People love to argue. I know. I'm just saying, don't act like now you're in there fanning the flames though, let's be honest. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah, don't stop arguing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's probably a good place to wrap it up. You think so? We probably need to. Okay, let's do it. Uh, Dusty, where are you going to be this I'm, weekend? Well, this weekend. I just uh, want to say I love I love everybody. Should we just say that? Yeah. I feel like when, when Nate's not here, sometimes when it ends, I feel weird about the way it wraps? The, no, not the way it wraps, but just, I don't know. I overthink how everything went. And I, I hope, think this is a great and podcast. And I hope none of this came across as too, you know, whatever. I think this is a great okay. podcast. Okay. This weekend, I'm going to be part of the Grand Old Opry, part of the, I, I want to be part of the showcase of the Opry. Sometimes I've, I've pitched the Opry before and people will think that it's my show. Mm-hmm. I'll be part of the Opry show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then coming weeks, you know, I'll be in February, I'll be in Milwaukee at the Improv. I'll be in Tulsa, Oklahoma and Indianapolis. Nice. So just if you're in those areas, it's going to be hot. It's going to be fun. And it's all new stuff from the special. Oh, all new the stuff. Special. I got a totally new hour. How about it? I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, it's going to be hot. That's the most impressive thing to me. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be in Palatka, Florida. People told me how to pronounce it. Palatka. Yeah, I think I was saying Palatka, but it's Palatka, Florida. February 17th. Let's ask this, though. Will you be taking your shirt off in Florida? (laughs) Depends on what the weather's like. (laughs) I mean, February still could be dicey. Not at the show, though. Uh, who knows, man? We'll see. Could do a little Burt Kreischer at Church, of the, Church of the Heights. Yeah. <laughs> Bates Kreischer in here. <laughs> My big closer. Yeah. Although he he starts with it, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, February 29th. I'm at the Comedy Catch in Chattanooga. All right. Nice, Hot dude. club. Yeah. My buddy Alex Valuto, who's been on this podcast, is coming with me there. All right. And yeah. then March 1st, the next day, Hudsonville, Michigan at uh, Fellowship Church. Nice, dude. Uh, I'd like to say comedy catch, great green room experience. <laughs> yeah. Great green room. And Danielle is an excellent swimmer. <laughs> Danielle's the best. This weekend, I'm going to the Windy City, huh? Chicago, right. Illinois at Zany's Comedy Club in Old Town, Chicago. Five shows, one show Thursday, two Friday, two Saturday. Uh, I'm doing a ton of press for it. I'm hoping I can pack those out. Uh, I'm excited to be back. So Chicago this weekend. If you're in the Chicago area, go see come Aaron. on out. Go see Aaron at Zanies in Old Town. Yeah. All right. That's it, Brian. You want to close it out? Yes. Um, as always, <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> None of this is lost on us, right? And Nate will be back next week, as far Boom. as we know. Boom. Dusty and will be gone. What? Who I knows? don't know. Maybe. Okay. But yeah. we're having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see who's here next week, but I bet I'll be here. And uh, yeah, we're having a good time. Thanks. That's it. Bye. All right. Thank you all. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. 
Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.